So, I've been asked to do a brief getting started video like I did for the other one. Um, unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to do it till today, but uh, better late than never. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start now. And you have two components. You have a melody and you have some chords. So I'll start with... Um, just a general thing about the melody. Remember, you want, um, you're going to want to do uh, either, you know, a key with two sharps or a key with two flats. So you've got uh, D major or B minor, um, B flat major. or G minor. And my handwriting is lovely on this, but let's just pick an easy one. Let's do D major. And what I would do is I would just write the scale out. And the easiest thing to do is just to stick with the scale. Similarly, let's do a minor, G minor, G, A, B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G. Um, with uh, the G minor, remember that we're usually asking you for a leading tone, so your F becomes F sharp. And I would just have those ready. So when you're writing your melody, you want eight bars, and the first thing to do, um, well, you can certainly go ahead and write your bars out. And I'll show you how to put all these together, right? Um, when we do, I'll show you in a, in a second how to, how to notate all these together. Let's just skip the bar lines for now. Um, just remember, the thing to remember is you have, you want to start and you want to end on the tonic pitch. And your second to last pitch, we're a little more flexible here. Either you're gonna go from the super tonic down to the tonic, or the leading tone, or the dominant. So it's gonna be one of these, one of that, these motions. So, um, and this is your dominant triad right there. That's, so just keep in mind, you wanna go from a note in the dominant triad, the regular dominant triad, not the seventh, the dominant triad to the tonic. Similarly with, with like G minor, you want to start and end, this is your melody, you want to start and end on the tonic, and you can either have the leading tone, now notice I'm doing the leading tone, not the subtonic, right, not an F, but an F sharp, supertonic, or dominant. And this is, again, this is your five triad right there. One of the notes from your five triad going to the tonic. So this is your melody. You just want to make sure you're starting and ending on the tonic. And same thing, starting with D, ending on D, starting with G, ending on D. You just want to start and end on the tonic of your scale. And the advantage of writing your scales out in advance is you know, oh, this is my, this is my tonic. Um, this is my leading tone. This is my supertonic. You want to stick. You don't want to be guessing what notes to use. You want to stick to certain notes and go with them. Okay. Let me see if I can just clear this. Because we want to do chords now. And I'm going to leave the scales there. But get myself some extra room. Okay. So we have our two potential scales. Let's do some triads. Now the same thing is you want to see what your possibilities are in advance. And we're going to ask you to write your harmony underneath in bass clef. So let's just look at what our possible triads are. 
or what are suggested. It's not that you're stuck using only these, but these are the suggested ones. And in a getting started video, we want to show you what we suggest. So let's do a, a let's write our scale out again in base clef. So we've written our scale out, so we know what our options are. Now we're going to write our triads out. So D, F sharp, A. So I'm just going to stack these up. And let's move these, these last three up down an octave just so we can see them a little better. B, D, F sharp, and C sharp, E, G. And D, F sharp, A. All right, so here it's just, all I've done is make a triad, uh, make my triads by stacking them and then adding in my C sharps and F sharps. Um, you know, because they're, the, they're from the, the, the key, C-sharps, C-sharps, F-sharps. Um, so I have my, my tonic, and I have my super tonic, and then I have my mediant, and I have my... I have my uh, subdominant and my dominant and my submedian and my leading tone and my tonic. Now I've written out um, in a form called figure base just so I can see what my what my scale degree is that it's starting on what my root is and that's often an issue people have if they have trouble identifying the root but here you can see all my roots very clearly because I just wrote out all my triads. I just stacked them. So if we were to do it again, you can see my, my scale right here. You can see my, my major scale. And again, I'm going down an octave just to make it a little easier to see. But there's my, my D major scale. Now, this is great. I've written, oh my, <coughs> sorry, I've written out my D major scale. Um, and I've put in my chords, but I can also go ahead, if this is a little difficult, just to put my my uh, chord quality, because you're going to have to make a little chart identifying chord quality. It's diminished. And this is major again. Now this is true common for every major scale, so we're working in D major here. And this kind of co com combination of chords is, is is common for all major. So the advantage of writing out just the triads in your major scale is that you don't have to worry about you don't you don't have to you don't have to worry about the quality. You've got it got it down in advance. You you know what that chord is. You know if you know okay two is always minor, six is always minor, seven and uh, leading tone chord is always diminished. You have it down. You're set. Good. All right, so let's do the same thing for G. Again, I'm going to go down an octave. G, A, B flat, C, D, E flat. And I'm going to keep my F sharp. I know it's an altered pitch, but generally speaking, um, it, you're going to find the F sharp a little more common in the harmonies than, than the F. All right, let's go again and just stack up my triads. So I have a B flat. And this is just notes in the key. And I would just get a piece of paper and write these all out. It's okay if you use a key signature when you're doing this to remind yourself, but we want you to be able to write out the actual notes in Uh, actual notes in the in the in the piece and again here's our F I'm also gonna have an F sharp here now see as, I, as you can already tell the uh, the minor is a little more complicated 
because some places I have F-sharps and some places I don't. Um, and usually, if, if we had a, a unit six, it would be easier to explain why. Um, these are called a dominant function chords, chords that work like a dominant, because dominant has a tendency to want to push towards the tonic. So in both the seventh and in the fifth, we have, there's that tendency. So I'm going to have a minor tonic chord and a diminished supertonic and a major median. So you can see the qualities change here. Minor, subdominant, and here the dominant chord, the major and minor, you're going to want just to have a, a major triad. Now if just, if I use the G minor natural, it would be a minor. But generally speaking, you want to use the major. Um, it creates that sense of motion, and especially at the end where you're looking to have a note that's in the, that's one of the notes of the, that's the, that's leading, the second to last note that's leading to the tonic, you're going to want to have that major, right, because you want the, the leading tone in that. Um, and then we have a, a major six, and then here are seven, it's also diminished because we've got the leading tone, and then a tonic. So if, if this is doing one thing, it's convincing you that maybe you, you don't really want to use the minor if you don't have to, if you can find a way to express uh, the melody, uh, your, your emotions other than that. But let's do the, um, let's see, this is minor, diminished, major. So if you write all these things out in advance, and I think there should be a graphic in the lesson where this is all diminished and then uh, minor. Uh, minor, uh, minor. There's, there should be a, a less, uh, graphic in the lesson that, that does all of this. So I've kind of got the basic materials, and now there's a couple other things which you're going to want to think about, right? First of all, you need to invert one of these triads at some point in your melody. So I would suggest inverting your supertonic. It's a very common inversion. So it's usually, oh, sorry, I'm going to put it base. So I'm just going to copy my supertonic down. Here's my supertonic. Oh, oh. Here's my, my supertonic, E, let's just stick with the same colors, G, B. I'm going to invert my supertonic. And I'm going to put it in first position. I'm going to take it down an octave. Um, so I'll put it down here so we can see it a little better without a bunch of larger lines. E, G, B. What I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to put it usually in first inversion. So G, B, and then I'm going to take that E up an octave. So you can see the, the root goes up an octave. So this is a supertonic six, or supertonic first inversion. And that's a very good first inversion, a chord to, to, in, to have in first inversion. Um, so that would be one option. Another common chord to have uh, in, in inversion is, uh, let's see, that's good. Let's, you could also do the tonic in first inversion. So, so instead of uh, D, F sharp, A, you could have uh, F sharp, A, D, so that would be, or you could have um, A, D, F sharp. So these are also very good options. This is a tonic. A tonic six and a tonic six four. And you can see how the bass goes, right? So the 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 bass the the root of the chord 
um, stays the same, but what notes on the bottom switches. So here's some, some common options that you can choose. Um, I would also make a suggestion on what chord to do your seventh chord. Now you studied a couple seventh chords, right? Um, but the most common one you've studied is the is the dominant is the, is sorry is the dominant seventh. So um, if I was to do a dominant seventh, if I can move that somewhere else, uh, let's see. Here's my dominant chord, a C sharp E. If I wanted to do ma make this a seventh chord, I would just add the G on top, right? So here's my also a good chord that's B inverted. You could do a C sharp, E, G, um, and you can stick your A like that. That would be an inversion, or C sharp, E, A, sorry, C sharp, oh, Jesus, look at me, reading in treble clef. I don't know, something, it's not a good place to write on my iPad. Let's put it over here. Um, you could do an E, uh, it does not want to, E, G, A, C sharp, something like that. But these are, these are your seventh chord, and again, I would, I would suggest doing it on your dominant, because, you know, dominant seventh. Again, um, if you were to invert, I would invert the two chords. So C, instead of A, C, E flat, you could do a first inversion uh, and do C, E flat, A. And again, this, this d diminished chord this is also a good place to put a seventh chord. Not so much in major, but in minor, absolutely. So C, A, C sharp, E, G. And again, you could invert that. C, E flat, G, A. That's a good, good place also your your dominant chord is a great place for a seventh. So these are good chords to invert. Dominant chord is good to invert. Tonic chord is good to invert. That's kind of my, my go-to options is I would use a super tonic, I would use a dominant, or I'd use a, uh, I'd use a tonic. Okay, so let's Let's get a fresh piece of paper here, or at least go to a new section of the piece of paper. You've, you've gotten your scales, you keep those written out, you've written out your triads, you've selected maybe a few to, to, be, your, to be your inverted and your seventh, you're going to start in your melody and end on the tonic, but you know what that is because you've written out your scale. So here you're, you're writing out and you're going to use a grand staff. Um, and again, pardon, pardon my handwriting, it's really hard to write on this thing. All right, so I've gotten a grand staff, and you know, you can, you can, if you want, you can lay out your measures in advance. But, you know, that sort of depends on your melody. But I will just do that for ease. All right, so I'm going to do D. So I can, right at the beginning, I can just start, and I think I'll end on a, end on a half note. Now remember, I can, um, so I've already gotten a decent number of points, just this much, because I've, I've started and I've ended on the tonic, right? So that's five of the points, right there. And now I want to get five more points, so my second to last note, I'm going to have it be super tonic. That's also one of the options. So I'm just going to go ahead and 
write a melody and I'm just gonna stick with notes in the scale because I've written my scale out and I know what the notes in my scale are So I'm just sticking with the notes of my mallet, with of my notes of my uh, scale. Let's see. Let's go here, and I'm going to use a little bit of repetition. Maybe take some of the ideas from my first bars, but maybe extend them up. Oh, I got myself quite, quite up there. Let's, let's get rid of that. And then maybe we need an extra bar. Boy, I haven't had to write something on the fly before. Um, okay, that'll work. All right, and you want to let let your your melody dictate, or you know, if I wanted to keep it to eight bars, sorry, I'm, now's not the time to look for a more elegant solution. I could just do that. Let's just do that. So here, I've my second to last notes, one of my optional notes, which is the dominant, and I've skipped up to the tonic. That's much better. Okay, so I've written my melody, I've gotten it down, and I have my chords that I can select from, and we specify that some of the notes of the melody should be in the chord. So here, I'm gonna, I've got a couple tonics, a couple Ds, so I can go to my move this back down here. I can go to my my, my uh, chords and say, well, what note, what, what options fit? So usually I would start and end on the tonic. So this, this one's kind of a no-brainer. You can just start and end on the tonic. And you know that you had, you know, you had to go, your second to last note had to be um, some some note from that dominant triad, the supertonic, the dominant, or the leading tone. So I can I can do the the dominant triad. So my second to last bar, I'm just going to do the dominant triad. Notice I haven't inverted anything yet, but that's okay. So here's my tonic, my tonic. Um, it's in major. Major, you can either write this out or you can put it in, in you know, you can put it in the, um, you, can, you can put it in a little chart underneath, little, little uh, word table or whatever. And let's see, here's, here's uh, the dominant, seventh chord, it's also, it's major minor. Okay, so we've, we've, we've handled some things. Let's look at these chords. Well, here I've got an, a G and a B, so I could, one option might be a GBD triad, right, which would be uh, subdominant, or um, uh, let's do this EGB, that's the, uh, the supertonic. Now remember I said that would be good in, in first inversion, so GBE. That's a, that, that would be, and now I've taken care of one of my, no, it's not diminished, it's, it's major, it's just taking care of, of one of my inversions. Um, all right, I've got an F sharp and uh, an A, so I could do an F sharp A C triad, or I could do uh, 
D, F sharp, A. I could just do another major, but let's do let's do a that's that's so what's this this is F sharp a C sharp which is my median and now I I'm doing something in my head that you can do visually because you've written out all your triads so you can just find one that works for you. Say, oh, okay, here is my, here, here is my, uh, my, my triads. I'm going to, I'm just going to pick one from the list of the ones I've written out and move it down. Um, you know, probably, probably this one would have been better an octave down because I'm getting myself really up there. So these are just decisions I'm making on the fly, so uh, let's see, G, uh, e, G, G, and that, what did I have here, my immediate, A, C uh, sharp, F sharp, let's see, I have a B and a D, let's just do something with that. Um, B, D, F sharp. So a B, D, and an F sharp. That, if I look down my list, that would be what? That would be a minor submediant. So I'm, I'm making a lot of progress here. Um, let's keep the same triad. That'll be interesting. And I need one more to fill out the, the, the list. And a good go-to is always the subdominant. Oh, that's submediant. Not my finest work. But there, I've gotten one harmony per bar. You can do multiple harmonies, but it's just everything may, everything you do to complicate this makes it more difficult. So here I've got a melody. I start and end on the tonic. I've got my second to last pitch as is one of the uh, required pitches, um, dominant, supertonic, or, or leading tone. And I've written out my triads in advance, and I'm just pulling them down. Um, and I'm usually just grabbing a couple notes from the melody and going, oh, I see I have a G and a B, I could probably do a G triad. I have a D and an F sharp, I could do a, a tonic triad, a D, F sharp, A triad. Or I have a G and a B, I could do a G triad, G, B, D, or an E, E, G, B triad. One of those options. So I've just grabbed a couple notes and I've written them out. Um, and that's all there is to it.